Hey, Evan here. I'm a partner at Fractal, a product development firm based in Nashville, and today I wanted to share a custom feature I wrote for Onshape called Captive Nut um, that I wrote to speed up our workflow here, and I'm going to share it with you, and hopefully it can speed up yours too. So let's get to it. The purpose of this feature is to create strong metal-to-metal -metal thread connections in otherwise weaker materials. Um, main, the main use case here is uh, for 3D printed parts, but it could be good for an injection molded part if you add draft or something like that. So there's a couple different ways that you can insert part uh, nut into a part, and so here's here's one example where it creates a a pocket. Um, and then that inserts kind of along its axis, and uh, we have a counter bore down here for a screw as well. Another style might be to insert the nut from the side uh, for aesthetic reasons. So you can see that the, from the outside of this, it's pretty clean. You got the screws here, but inside, the nuts are inserted into these holes. Another insertion method that could make sense for your design workflow is to embed them directly into the 3D print. The idea is that you will start your 3D print and print it up to this point and insert the nut and then continue the print up to the next point and insert all of this at once. And the reason we've got these uh, little inserts that are automatically generated by the feature is to help keep the nut really snug and tight. So you could print and bridge across this on most FDM machines, but then in certain certain situations with the nut at certain angles, the nut would be loose inside, and you might uh, even strip it out if you're trying to torque it down or something like that. So this uh, generates supports that will let you put them in at any angle and will make sure the nut is really nice and constrained inside of your part. So let's go take a tour through the feature and I will show you how this thing works. So the first thing I'm going to do is push Option C and just start typing Captive Nut. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to add this to your toolbar. So we've got our styles here that I just went over at the top. The next thing down should look pretty familiar from the whole feature. It's not as complete a list, which I actually find better for, for this because it's just there's already plenty of options, but here you can choose basically inch, metric, and once you pick that, you have your screw size options, and each, each sub subsequent option can change depending on what you picked before. So here we've got hex and square, and if I pick square, then I only have a machine screw nut. If I go hex, there's also just that, but if I'm at a more common quarter 20, I have a lot more nut options, and these will change the, the width of the nut itself. And then here we have the fit, which is free or close, and that helps. You know, you might want close if you have a higher tolerance printer, or you might want free if you want to have a little bit more of a forgiving design. On down from that, we've got some icons that I hope communicate the, the purpose of each of these numbers here. This is familiar from the whole feature as well. This is the diameter of the clearance hole for your screw the width of the nut across the flats, the thickness of the nut, clearance around the nut, and this is for a screw overshoot. So if you uh, don't include this, you might run into a situation where your screw goes beyond the nut and actually impacts your uh, plastic part and could cause some strain. So this allows you to add, add some relief there. Um, offset depth is maybe easier shown, so let me just demo that. Um, you can use a sketch point, I usually just push this button and grab a mate connector. And I'm also gonna turn the view to translucent so that you can really see what's going on here. So I have picked that. The next thing I need to do is grab a merge scope, which will be both of these parts. And we've already got it. So that would that would work as is uh, with a quarter, quarter 20 screw and a, a quarter inch nut. Um, but the offset depth will let us push it down into the part a little bit more, which can help if you're, you know, the nut should be flush, but maybe it would be a little, depending on your tolerances of your machine, it might stick out a little bit or something like that. So this will let us push it down into the part. And this is especially important for the slot style. So, you know, you can see this wouldn't actually retain the nut, but if we push it down into the part with this, then 
we've got a nice spot to insert a nut from the side. We can also add, uh, you know, we can remove the screw hole altogether. Most of the time you'll need it, so it's checked by default. We have a counterbore option as well, so you can recess the screw head. And once you check counterbore, you get a screw length option. So if we increase this, uh, you can see that now our counterbore goes into the second part and will actually clamp together. This dimension here really is the dimension from the bottom of the screw head to the far side of the nut. And in addition to that, here's that screw overshoot I was describing. And this doesn't change the length of the screw, this is more of a clearance to make sure you have a little bit of extra space. Uh, right. Uh, the chamfer is another thing that you can add here, and that will come in and add a lead in, which will make it a little bit easier to seat the nut and press it into place. It also works on the pocket style. And the nice thing about that is, you know, on a part like this that has lots of different edges, if you wanted to rotate it around, if you had manually modeled your chamfer, you would have to go repick those edges every time. But in this case, if I change it to 30 degrees, it's going to chamfer, you know, it'll, it'll find its way around. So. That's part of why I built it straight into the feature. Um, yeah, the last style is the embedded style. And this one uh, is a little bit more complex, but I think pretty powerful. Uh, I have another one, another feature here that's already set up a little better for that. So let me unsuppress these and show you how that works. You can see we've got a nut. We can put it in any, any angle. I, I modeled in this little blue nut just so that you can kind of see what's going on. It's very rough. It's not really dimensionally accurate, but it's uh, just so you can interpret what's going on. So for example, the, the support that is automatically generated based on your printer's vertical Z direction, and it changes the style based on the angle that we're at. So if we're at zero degrees, the nut doesn't need a support. You can print straight across that, no problem. But as soon as you start going wider, it can't print at a five degree angle. So you'll generate a support that you can drop in on top so your printer can just print straight across. And as we keep clocking this around, you'll notice that we get some edges popping up on the right side. And the, that's uh, what's really happening is we're just taking the, the, the faces of the nut that are pointing up in the Z direction and just projecting them up to a, a plane. And when you do that, you can end up with some little sliver faces. So part of the feature just measures the angle of this face and the outside face. And if the angle gets too thin, then I use that as a proxy for how, you know, whether it's a knife edge or not, and we'll just delete it. Um, and that can help with printability. Uh, it really doesn't matter too much if you're using an FDM machine and you throw this into Cura, even if it has some really thin slivery edges, it just won't path that area if it's too small. So it's not a huge deal, but maybe it would matter if you were printing your supports on a resin machine or something like that. It also just visually is a little more true to life and makes for a cleaner slicing experience. So I'm gonna keep clocking this around and it's working, working, working. Once we get to 45 degrees, you'll notice it changes to this style. And the reason for that is at 45 degrees is kind of a good rule of thumb for what you can do as an unsupported overhang for an FDM machine. So uh, here the nut is meant to be dropped in from a vertical direction and then you put your insert uh, support on top. And with this one, the nut is meant to be inserted from the side and the support also inserted from the side. So this takes a little less material and it produces a stronger joint because now the nut is pressing when you clamp it, it presses against the main body of the 3D print instead of, in this case, pressing against the support, which in turn presses against the main body. So it's just a little more efficient. And you can see that that keeps clocking all the way around until we get 45 degrees the other way, and it converts back to the other style, um, but with no hole because the screw is coming from the other way. If I complete that, you can still get the screw overshoot here. I just want to show that. Uh, which I recommend for most things. So you might still want a little extra space so that your screw, you can guarantee that it can go all the way through. The way that this embedded thing works is you, you can pick a printer Z direction and that's shown by this arrow. If you don't pick anything, it grabs the world Z direction, which is probably right for most cases. We've also got a separate nut support clearance here. And the reason it has its own 
clearance in addition to the one for the nut is that nuts are usually higher precision and 3D prints are usually lower precision. So it's a different tolerance stack up and you might want to adjust that independently. So let's go take a look at my uh, embedded example part. And you can also see that it outputs names and numbers for each nut support automatically. And I thought that this would be a really great part to do a test print with and make sure that the feature is working. So I'll do that in a later video and walk you through the process of printing this on our Mark Forged machine. Uh, one more thing before I wrap up this video is I wanted to give a quick glance at the actual code itself. And you know, um, this is this is all written in FeatureScript, which is Onshape's custom language for writing features. And if you want to go look at all this code and see how I you know, wrote this feature, you're welcome to go and do that. I will put a link in the description to this document and you can come check out all the example parts that I have here and you can also add the feature to your toolbar. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, the link that I add will actually be a link to a version and that is a requirement if you're going to add the feature to your toolbar. It needs to reference a fixed state of the model. So I am looking here at V14 to add this to your toolbar. You'll just click this plus icon. I've already added it to mine, so it will say that I've removed it, but I'll just click it again and add it back. So that's it. That's how you add it to the toolbar. One last thing that I want to do before I sign off here is to um, shout out someone from the forums, uh, which is Arul Suresh. His name on the forums is Lemon1234. And the reason for that is that I, this amazing table that has all the dimensions for the different sizes of screws and nuts, I just copied and pasted all of this info from a feature that he made, his T-slot nut feature. Uh, and so all I did was add the counterbore diameters, but uh, this, this is the code that produces all of those drop downs with all of the logic to help you find your way to the, the nut that you're working with. So thanks to a rule for that. If you learn something new, hit like. If you want to see more videos like this, I'm, I'm hoping to produce more videos targeted at more advanced Onshape users. So if you want to be alerted to those, subscribe and hit the bell. And uh, yeah, we'll check out the 3D print in the next video. Thanks for watching.